let's take a look at our second example. Here I have negative 3 fourths x equals 12. So negative 3 fourths times some unknown equals 12. Now recall from a previous lesson that the best way to handle this is to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this fraction. So that the reciprocal of negative 3 over 4 is simply 4 over negative 3. And immediately do the same thing to the other side. 4 over negative 3. Remember what happens over here. 4 over 4 cancels because it equals 1. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 equals 1. And negative divided by negative, negative is a positive. So we have 1x on the left, which we can just write as x. Now on the right, recall that since we're in the world of fractions, what we want to do is turn 12 into a fraction. And the way to do that is by writing it as 12 over 1 times 4 over negative 3. Okay, now this gets a little bit tricky here. We want to do some cross-canceling. The greatest common factor of 12 and 3 is 3. What I'm going to suggest to do here is I'm going to divide the 12 by 3 and the negative 3 by 3. Now watch how that works out. 3 goes into 12 four times, so I'm going to make that a 4. 3 goes into negative 3 negative 1 times. Make sure you see that the 3 goes into 3 once, but I never did get rid of that negative. So this actually becomes negative 1. I realize that that's a little bit tricky, so keep looking at that and keep thinking about that until it's clear. If you're not comfortable with the cross-canceling, we could just multiply across and then divide. That will also work. So now multiplying across, we have x equals 4 times 4, which is 16. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Now, the way we would write this is simply negative 16. We know that the 1 in the denominator doesn't matter, but a positive divided by a negative is a negative. So x equals negative 16. Let's check. The check is especially important when you're working with negatives like this, and it's so easy to make a mistake and get confused. So here's my original problem. Negative 3 fourths times x equals 12. I'm going to substitute negative 16. Negative 3 fourths. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and substitute it in the numerator. I'm just going to actually start out by substituting 16 over 1 because we need actually negative 16 over 1 because we know that that's where it has to go. Our check value of negative 16 is really negative 16 over 1. Okay, does that equal 12? This just goes to show how really easy it is to get confused with your signs. Let's see here. Well, again, we're going to do some cross-canceling. If we want to, we can multiply the numerators, and then multiply the denominators, and then divide, but I'll cross-cancel. I see that the greatest common factor of 4 and negative 16 is 4. 4 goes into 4 once, 4 goes into 16 four times, but I still did not get rid of that negative. So this negative 16 becomes negative 4. Okay, now multiplying across, we have negative 3 times negative 4. A negative times a negative is a positive, that's 12. And then 12, we just have 1 in the denominator. We know we don't have to bother to write that. 12 does equal 12, so that shows that our original answer of x equals negative 16 is correct. That's a really tricky problem. Just stay with it until it's fully clear. All right, so this lesson just offered some more practice with one-step algebraic equations involving signed numbers. In the next lesson, we're going to take this to the next level. We're going to start doing algebraic equations involving two steps, where it will require us to do two separate things in order to get x by itself. You'll work more with that in the upcoming lesson.